If you've been doing anything but living under a rock lately, you know that large language models, the poster child of which is ChatGPT, are taking over the world by storm, and that Tesla has made some limited use of large language models before. But what if Tesla really gets into large language models for real? What could happen? Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I want to start off by saying, of course, this is a speculative episode. <laughs> I don't have any real evidence. I'm going to kind of connect a few dots, like connecting the dots, so shout out to connecting the dots. Anyway, I'm going to connect a few dots and then talk about the possibilities. So one of the dots that we have, of course, is that John Emmons at AI Day Number 2, you can catch my video on this, talked about using large language model techniques in order to do lane geometry, like a language of lanes, essentially, a grammar of lanes. And by the way, this was prior to chat GPT coming out. So this was, you know, just with GPT prior to that, right? This was September 30th. ChatGPT came out in early November, like the 10th or something. So anyway, there, there's a gap between those, but you could see that Tesla was already cognizant of that technology and was already using it in novel and interesting ways. The second piece of this puzzle is the video that I did recently, which I'll link up here and at the end of the video as well. And that is about Twitter acquiring an AI team, a kind of a skunk works AI team to compete with OpenAI and ostensibly to build a large language model of their own. And I discussed how Twitter actually has a really interesting data moat in the fact that it's got access to all of the tweets and the conversations that people have. And then the third dot that I want to connect, and this is again a video, is up here, is Elon Musk's X Corporation and his propensity to synergize, ooh, I hate that word, but anyway, to synergize his companies by allowing them to cross-pollinate with each other. So there is a lot of evidence, in fact, it's factually true, I know this, that part of the AI team from Tesla went to Twitter for a period of time to help them when he first took over Twitter back in October, November. And the part that I don't know, but I think is true, is that a lot of them are still there, or at least sort of moonlighting and working part-time at Tesla and part-time for Twitter. So there is a lot of cross-pollination going on already, and what could happen is that if and when Twitter develops this large language model, that they could share some of the results of that and they could also orient it to some extent towards what Tesla needs rather than the general public at large and or they could create a fork that was designed specifically for Tesla. Now, of course, since these are officially still separate businesses at this point until X Corp takes them all over and becomes Chome, we're looking at something where Tesla would have to pay Twitter or in kind pay them, maybe have some of the employees at Tesla working for Twitter or some hardware exchange or something like that in order to pay Twitter for the work that they're doing. So that makes reasonable sense. But of course, that's also no big deal. That's just, you know, you gotta get the lawyers involved to make sure that works. But of course, between Tesla and Twitter, they have a lot of very good lawyers. So they can smooth the path to doing all of that kind of stuff. So the really interesting part here becomes what if this does in fact take place? And I believe from, again, some evidence that I've been looking at that this might actually be in the works already. What happens if Tesla gets access to the guts of a really, really intensively trained and potentially very focused large language model that's designed just for them? And this is where the last dot comes in, in the form of a conversation between Dave Lee and James Dalma that was just published today, I think, yesterday, I don't know. Anyway, very, very recently, you can check it out. It'll be in the recent videos that Dave Lee has done. And if I remember, I will also post that in the description as well. Excellent conversation. But anyway, James started talking about large language models' ability to plan. There's kind of an inherent necessity that these LLMs are able to plan out the future. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is if you say to the large language model, can you find me five good recipes for how to make baked Alaska? I don't know, something like that. It has to actually, you know, there's a mental, you know, semi-conscious sort of activity that has to take place, which is parsing what I asked and then planning out what it's going to do. It needs to bullet point five different recipes. It needs to come up with the ingredient list. It needs to come up with the instructions, all of that kind of thing. That involves a good deal of planning and it's done in a fairly abstract manner, right? I've asked a very general question 
question. I have not gone in and detailed out exactly what kind of thing I want. I haven't said, give me every single ingredient, the number of cups or milliliters or whatever it is that you need, the, the instructions, how much to preheat the oven, all of that stuff. I could go in and specify all of that stuff, but that makes a large language model like ChatGPT much less useful if you have to be that specific about it. The beauty of ChatGPT and other models like this is that it's very natural. You can speak to it or write to it in a way that feels extremely natural as if you were talking to another human being. So how does this apply to Tesla? Like, like I said, we've already seen at AI Day 2 that they are understanding and utilizing large language models to create like a grammatical situation for things like lanes and all of that kind of stuff. But what does this more abstract sort of planning capability really start to give us if you start thinking about the larger possibilities? Well, let's start with Tesla vehicles. With Tesla vehicles, you might think to yourself, well, it already does everything it needs to, right? You're like navigate to the grocery store and it like route plans and does all of that kind of stuff. No big deal. It works pretty well. But what if you could give it more abstract instructions? And remember, eventually we're going to get to RoboTaxi land where the RoboTaxi plus potentially Optimus might be able to do a bunch of tasks for you during the day while you're doing something else. So we can we can think about that in just a second. But even in the near future, you could do something like I know, for example, that we have football games Saturdays here in town in the fall because I live in Athens and the traffic is a ridiculous kind of situation when that happens because people come from Atlanta and other areas. And so it gets really, really stacked up. So if you said I wanted to navigate and make a trip, let's I don't know why. Usually you just stay home on those Saturdays. But what if I had to go out and go across town or something? Well, what you could do is say I want to go here, but then a large language model in the car could start considering not only the outbound trip. So maybe it's early enough that there's not that many people on the road yet, but it might start considering and thinking about, okay, this is a football Saturday. I know this from information I've got. What about the return trip that's going to be three and a half hours later when things are going to be a nightmare in town? How could I manage that? And it could actually make suggestions like maybe you should leave earlier, or it might suggest going to a different version of that store if it was a store you're going to, or it could take a very circuitous route and it could plan that out and it could already realize, you know, if your battery was low that you were going to need to supercharge. There's just a lot of things that it could do on the planning front, but it gets even cooler if you start thinking about the car acting on its own. So let's say that you have to go grocery shopping to pick up some groceries. You need to go to another store to do another thing. And then you have to drop off your kid at school and also pick up your kid at school, you know, at different various times and you're working all day. So if we had a hypothetical large language model and it had access to your calendar, it could read all of that stuff, look at your shopping list, make out a plan. It could map out an efficient plan for the whole day and go about dropping off the kid, going to the grocery store, going to this place, going to supercharge itself, then going and picking up the kid in the afternoon and coming home. It could do all that stuff as if it was an actual human being assistant. That's the kind of beauty of this. We start to look at something that behaves not like a tool where you have to give it pretty specific instructions about what you want to do. And it's also dumb about understanding the future to something that just like with a large language model, right? It has to know what it's going to say. Yes, it is in fact auto completing the next token, but it has to plan out a pretty reasonable distance that it has to think about in the future if it's doing things in some sort of order. So you can take that sort of concept and transition that into the physical world as opposed to the, 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 the textual world. So right. So you're getting instead of tokens, it's actually thinking about the next thing it wants to do. But surrounding that, it's got an envelope of quasi understanding where it really kind of has a sense of exactly what it's doing and why it's doing those things, at least on a local level. Again, not arguing this is conscious by any means, but that is kind of a quasi conscious element of large language models. And again, one of the reasons why I think people think they're so magical is that they have that sort of predictive power. They're able to do things that seem outside the capabilities of what a computer should be able to do. So again, a large language model applied to the physical world could be really interesting because it could allow it to behave in a much more complex and semi-conscious manner and actually take on multiple tasks with a single type of command, like, you know, do my day's tasks or something. And then it figures it out and it does all of that stuff without you having to intervene. That is a pretty interesting future. The more interesting future is what happens with something like the Tesla bot.
So if you think about an automobile, it only has a few tasks. As Scott Walter likes to say, it has a job of not interacting with the world. The whole idea is that it it drives someplace, it doesn't crash into things, it doesn't go off the road, right? It's I mean, it's, it's kind of a little bit tongue in cheek because obviously it's interacting with the world because it's driving. But the idea is that it's doing the most it can to stay away from other things and to go about its business. A robot, on the other hand, has to do stuff like go over here and pick up a cup. It has to pick up a pen. It has to write things. It has to pick up something at a factory and move it over here. So all of these tasks currently in the kinds of robots that are in factories right now are very, very specifically like down to the millimeter often. It's like rotate this many degrees, go down, you know, five millimeters in the Z axis and do this kind of a thing. So you're specifying things out in very, very great detail, which makes the robots extremely useful to do like stuff that they repeat over and over and over again that don't change and you're making millions of these parts or something. That's fantastic. Robots are, you know, amazing at that kind of work. What they're not good at is understanding abstract instructions and taking those on and figuring out how to do all of the individual parts on their own. And what we currently have with Optimus is an amazing thing, right? We've got something that can actually see the world and basically understand what's going on in the world. It uses its vision just like the autopilot car does to figure out that like there's a chair right there there's a surfboard up there that's a bookshelf etc cetera, etc cetera. so anyway it does those kinds of things it's able to recognize them in fact better than me i can't do it backwards in a camera <laughs> but but anyway it's able to recognize that stuff and to interact in that way but it's still probably i'm taking a guess at this but it probably requires a great deal of granular instructions it's like go over here do this probably not to the level of rotate your arm 90 degrees and then do this kind of thing but it's it's probably spelled out a whole bunch, just like that recipe where I said, I need, you know, name me ingredient A, how many milliliters of that do I need? What is the thing that I need to get? Then name ingredient B and, you know, go down in a very, very specific thing. That would be a pain in the butt. It would make a large language model not particularly useful if you had to give it that much detailed instruction. So if you think about how Tesla bot could work in this sort of thing, you could just say, can you please go pick up that object, put it in the car? Rather than specifying every single movement, you could say to the Tesla bot, I need the dashboard put in that vehicle. And it could go do it and figure out how to do it. It could plan out the whole thing. Essentially, it's an incredibly sophisticated version of path planning. Currently, what you get, you know, path planning is figuring out exactly what the best route is for something to go through or something like that. But this is a way more sophisticated version of that because it's multiple tasks. It's an abstract command, right? Saying put the dashboard in is not specifying how to do that. And if you set it to a human being, we'd have to think about it, right? If we hadn't done it before, we'd be like, hmm, how am I going to do that? How do I fit it in? You know, what's the way to the best way to go about doing something like that. So a human would have to think about it. But what we're doing with a large language model translated into the physical world is we are allowing this again, hypothetically, we're allowing a robot like Optimus to be able to do abstract tasks and to break it all down and figure out what it needs to do next on its own. Maybe what we should call it is a large world model instead of a large language model. I think that'd be kind of cool. So it'd be an LWM instead of an LLM. So we could get LWMs, we could get large world models where it takes in all of this data and then it utilizes a pre-trained linguistic network, a large language model. But on top of that, it fine tunes it with the real world and is able to then fine tune the, the weights of the neural networks to be able to interact with the world in a very sophisticated manner where the person is able to give it very much natural language and just tell the robot to do something. You know, someday if you have one of these things at home, you could tell the robot, just like the car, you could say, do my tasks, go shopping for me. The robot could then figure out where it needs to get the ingredients from, including potentially opening up the refrigerator. Maybe Maybe you could just tell it something like, I need five meals this week, you know, figure it all out. <laughs> something like that. That's a very abstract instruction. It would have to figure out what people's dietary restrictions are, what people like to eat, what's in the refrigerator, what's in the cupboard, what does it need to buy, how is it going to get there, when is the best time to go and get there, how is it going to go shopping, how is it going to pay for all of this stuff, how is it going to get back home again, you know, on and on and on. There's tons and tons of instructions with something like that, but how incredibly useful does a robot become? 
overcome if it can behave in that sort of manner. So this is the kind of thing that I'm really excited about. You know, when I started, when I got inspired about this and started thinking, wait, large language models can come out of the box. They could become large world models instead. And you can then interact with the world just like we're interacting with ChatGPT right now. And that really raises some amazing possibilities. And if you think people like Randy Kirk and Elon Musk are crazy about thinking about millions to billions of these robots, start thinking about how useful ChatGPT is and how it's already changed the world and how it became the piece of software with 100 million users, the fastest of anything in history. I think that what we're gonna be looking at is if Tesla is able to integrate large world models into these robots, that we will see a demand that so far outstrips their ability to make these things that they're, they're going to have to be other companies to just make other ones because we're going to have just robots coming out of the woodwork at that point because everybody's going to want one. Anybody can afford one and even people who can't are going to want to rent them for periods of time. Everybody is going to want to have these robots and what they can do because it is going to be world changing. And if you can't tell, I'm pretty darn excited about that. One little addendum I want to put on the end of this is open source. So Elon Musk, one of the reasons why he's doing the skunk works at Twitter is to open source the AI models and all of that kind of stuff. What happens if they do produce something like this, a large world model? Well, this could also be an interesting little thing because what could happen is that Twitter could open source the large language model that's associated with that and give that away. And that would fulfill Elon Musk's vision of open sourcing this AI. But at the same time, Tesla, if they get this you know, fine-tuned large world model that's based on that, they don't have to give that away, just like they're not giving away the weights for their full self-driving. Maybe someday they will, but at this point for competitive advantage, they kind of need it or else... Tesla would not have the competitive advantage it needs to survive and thrive into the future. So this would be an interesting way of bifurcating that. You could have open source large language models coming out of Twitter that everybody has access to. And at the same time, you have these large world models that have data moats around them because they're collecting real world data and putting it into these models and fine tuning them, but they're not giving that away. And they are keeping that as a competitive advantage for Tesla and eventually potentially X Corp. All right, so again, a ton of speculation in this episode, but it is really, really fun to think about this, and it really might not take that long. Large language models kind of sprung up out of nowhere, and now they're like taking over the world. So if this can actually transition into the real world with large world models, yeah, you have to build hardware, so it's going to be much, much slower to roll out because it just takes time to build hardware, but it still could be just as transformative as these large language models have been in the more idea text space. And while it is a little bit scary to think about how much could change and how different the world could be, it's also incredibly exciting to be able to live through a time like this. All right, I hope you enjoyed this speculative episode and found it fun and interesting and thought-provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. I've got a bunch of other gym ideas that sprung to mind this morning, so stay tuned. There'll be a number of them coming up in the next week or two. As always, a huge shout out to my Patreon patrons and also my YouTube channel members. Thank you all so much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. And of course, if you want to join the team and join the discussion, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.